Hi, and welcome to this final video on cluster analysis. So in this video, uh, which is rather short, we we'll just introduced the K-means++ algorithm as an alternative or improvement to Lloyd's algorithm that we covered in the previous video. So just a quick reminder of what we saw in the previous video, uh, we're looking at K-means clustering, where the goal is to choose K centers as you want to see K to minimize a loss on a data set S. And this loss is uh, the sum of all the points in the data set of the squared Euclidean distance to the nearest sender, right? Uh, so this is the problem we introduced. And uh, we also argued in the previous video or mentioned that this problem is NP hard to solve. Uh, so therefore we just need heuristics that seem to do well in practice, right? We cannot really hope to find an optimal solution uh, quickly. Good. So in the previous video, we also saw Lloyd's algorithm, which is probably the most famous or simplest algorithm for K-means clustering. I also called the K-means algorithm in a lot of literature. And the basic idea of this algorithm is the simple uh, strategy where you pick K random input points as your initial centers. So you let C be those points. And you repeat these two steps where you uh, assign every point uh, to the closest center. So you put them in a cluster together and then you replace all the, the centers by the means of these new clusters. And then you repeat this, this process until it converges. Okay. We also talked a little bit about the fact that this algorithm uh, has the downside that the quality of the final clustering depends on how you initialize it. You know, so we, what are the K points that we choose as our initial senders? And also we saw an example where the quality of this clustering that you get at the end may be arbitrarily uh, worse than the optimal clustering of the data. In particular, this data set looked like this. So let me just quickly remind you what this, uh, this bad example was for a Lloyd's algorithm is you have four points and they're placed like this. So two of them are sitting out here on the right with a distance of two uh, vertically. And then there's this uh, large gap between these two sets of points with a distance of two W. And W, think of that as something really, really large, arbitrarily large. Now, if you pick K random input points, you might be unlucky and with probability half put pick two points on the same side like we have over here. And what you'll see is that if you run Lloyd's algorithm, as we also saw in the previous video, so please go and watch that if you're in doubt. The final clustering that we'll compute is this one here, where we have a red center and we've grouped the two top points together and a blue center where we group the two bottom points together. And this clustering has every single point has a distance of W to its center. And so the sum of squared distances is four W squared, whereas the optimal clustering would put a one center on the right, one center on the left. Everyone will have a distance of one to the nearest center and the total cost of the optimal clustering uh, would be just four. Right. So this shows that this clustering that you compute, the cost of it may be arbitrarily much worse than the optimal clustering. Okay, good. So this is everything we've already seen about Lloyd's algorithm. So the K-means++ plus plus algorithm that we'll introduce here of heuristic, the basic idea is to come up with a better initialization strategy, right? So picking these K random input points uh, in a different way, uh, which is also called seeding the algorithm, right? So we're going to seed it better. Good. And then the basic idea in the K-means++ plus plus is to just run Lloyd's algorithm afterwards, right? So the important point is to seed it in a good way. Choose the initial senders smarter. Okay, so let's try to build a little bit of motivation for what the K-means++ plus plus algorithm is doing, right? So uh, if we go back to this a bad example for Lloyd's algorithm, like these four points here, um, if we think about what's going on here when we're when, when Lloyd's algorithm is picking these initial centers, maybe let's try to think of it as we're picking one center at a time, right? First we're picking a center, and then we're picking another one and another one. Okay, so in this case, we're just gonna pick two. So, and while we're doing so, let's try to look at what are the costs of uh, clustering the points along the way. So let's see what we mean by that. So maybe the first point you pick is this top rightmost one, right? very plausible, uh, you pick one of the four points, you get that one. Now, let's try to look at, if I stopped now, I just say, this is my clustering, I only have one center, you know, then what would the cost be? Well, each of these points will contribute the square of the length of this uh, line segment to the current cluster center. And that's the contribution to the cost. And 
if we're unlucky, and this is what Lloyd's algorithm does when, when it fails, is that you'll pick this sender over here that's sitting right next to it, and then we still have these very big contributions to, to uh, the clustering cost. I guess, of course, in the next iteration, you'll move the senders to the middle, but you'll still have these huge contributions to the cost. And this is really what is a, like a bad choice of, of next sender is when we pick this blue one right next to, to the first one. If we picked any of the two others, we would have been uh, more happy. Okay. So... It seems like, at least if you're looking at what's going on in this example here, that somehow it's a bad idea to choose the second sender close to the first one. Like, because then we have these very far away points that are very expensive. And uh, yeah, so these, these two ones on the left, they still contribute very much to, to the cost. Okay, so, so this can be, I guess, translated into a general principle uh, where in some sense, right, we should pick a, pick a center. And when we choose the next one, we don't want to pick a center that's very close to the first one in some sense, right? We want to pick one that's far away, like this one down here. And similarly, when we're picking the third center, if we want to go for three centers, it would be nice if we could pick one that's far away from both the first and the second, right? So we want to send it over here. Uh, that's kind of the general principle behind K means plus plus, though not, not exactly, but that's the main intuition to have in mind. We want to pick centers that are kind of far away from the previous ones. And so this gives the k-means plus plus algorithm. So let's try to, to look at it here. So, so the first line says, let's see one be a uniform random input point. So this is just like in Lloyd's algorithm, pick a random point uh, as your first sender. And then for the remaining k-minus one senders, you pick them one at a time. And when you come to the picking the i-th center ci, uh, you let it equal one of the input points x. Uh, but the chance that you pick the point x uh, is this uh, oh, it should have been a px here. Sorry, the, uh, not a pi, but a p of x, the probability of picking x. Well, what should be the probability of picking x? Well, it's the minimum, or the top term here is basically I'm looking at the minimum over all the previous clusters, right? So all the j's, cluster centers, all the j's less than i. So these are the centers that we've already chosen, right? So I'm looking at, basically I'm taking the closest of the previous centers and I'm looking at my squared distance to that point, okay? And the denominator here is just, well, I sum over all my data points and look at the current contribution to the cost. Right? So, so what this is really saying, the, the chance that we should sample or pick point X is proportional to the contribution of X to the cost of the current clustering if I only have the center C1 to C I minus one, right? Because the top here is the contribution from uh, point X to the cost. And the bottom here is the total cost if I only have the senders uh, up to CI minus one. And so this is what the album is just saying. So you're basically going to pick points uh, that contribute a lot to the cost. You're going to pick them more often than points that contribute little to the current cost of the clustering. Okay. Now, once you've chosen your K initial centers, you just run Lloyd's algorithm and read. You repeat until convergence where you iteratively assign every point to its closest center. Then you replace all these centers by the means of the points in the cluster. And then you repeat until nothing changes or until it changes sufficiently little. Right, so this is the full K means plus plus algorithm. It's a different way of initializing it. So, so maybe let us see how uh, this works on this nasty example for Lloyd's algorithm. So initially, right, we have to pick the first center. We just pick it uniformly at random. Right? So each of these points have probability a quarter of being picked. So, you know, we just pick one of them at random and by rolling the dice and might, we might get this uh, center up here. Okay. Now, the interesting thing is when we are about to pick the second point, right? So when we're about to pick the second point, I guess we should look at, well, for the current clustering, where we only have one center. How much does each of the three or the four points actually contribute uh, to the clustering cost? Well, I guess there's a point sitting right underneath this the center. It has a it has a distance of zero to to the center. So so this one has zero up here. The remaining one, this one is at a distance of two. So the squared distance is four. This one was at a distance of w. So it's squared a uh, two w. So its squared distance is four w squared. This one contributes four w squared plus plus one. So, so these are the cost or basically the squared length of these line segments, All right? Okay, but now we're about to pick the second center. And what this k-means plus plus algorithm says is that, well, we should pick the second center uh, by choosing, letting all these probabilities be proportional to the contribution to the cost when we have this one center. So, 
So basically what we get is, well, this one contributes 4w squared to the cost and the total cost is 8w squared plus 8. So the probability that we should pick this one here, the contribution of this one should be, uh, the, the, this probability is 4w squared divided by 8w squared plus 8. This one here, well, it's 4w squared plus 1 over the total um, sum of all these contributions of the total cost. And this one was just a 4 over the total cost. Okay, so these are now the probabilities with which I should pick my points. And if we look at these numbers, right, we'll see that, well, this one over here, well, it's basically a half, right? This basically says 4w squared over 8w squared. It's almost a half, and this is almost, uh, this is basically a half. This one down here is basically nothing, right? It's 1 over 2w squared. So these are pretty much a half each, and this one is super small. It's 1 over 2w squared, at least if w is, is something big, right? So this means that this uh, k-means plus plus algorithm has really said that, oh, it should be much more likely to sample these points over here on the left than this point over here on the right. So which means that when you roll your dice to pick sender C2, it's much more likely that you get one of the points over here. And once you have these two centers, finishing off by running Lloyd's algorithm, repeating until convergence, is going to go be fast, right? So you're going to assign every point to its closest center. So this one is going to be assigned to the blue. This one's going to be assigned to the red. And we're going to uh, compute the new uh, the new means, right? So this is the blue point. This is a red point. And the new means are right here in the middle. And we're done. And we have the optimal clustering, right? So, so to summarize, this is really what the k-means++ plus plus algorithm is doing, right? You run in each of these uh, k steps, first sampling a uniform random starting point, And then from there on, you're sampling every input point with probability proportional to its contribution to the total cost of clustering with senders C1 up to CI minus one. Once you pick these, uh, you just run Lloyd. So this is just Lloyd's algorithm with a clever trick for initializing it. Actually, and this is beyond the scope of this video, but you can go and read the original paper introducing K-means plus plus. One can actually prove that if you do this initialization here, uh, the expected cost of the solution that you're going to get you can actually bound this expected cost by log k, so k is the number of clusters, times opt. And what is opt? Opt is the cost of the optimal clustering. Right, so this means that this is really what is called an approximation algorithm. You can prove that uh, the, the solution that it finds is at least an expectation, the most a log k factor worse uh, than the optimal uh, clustering of the data set. Okay. Maybe just a small uh, comment also. This, this algorithm seems to say, okay, pick points that are far away from, uh, that contribute a lot to the current cost. You could also say, what if I just, instead of picking a random point, I just deterministically pick the point that is contributes the most to the cost. This seems like a better strategy. Actually, you can, you can cook up examples where that fails, right? So you really need this randomness in order to, to prove, uh, to come up with something that is an approximation algorithm, right? So, so that's a word of warning. So you should really sample uh, according to these probabilities every point is sampled with probability proportional to its contribution to the current cost of the clustering. And so that concludes our discussion of clustering algorithms.